So here are the seven main components I'm going with for this build. So the motherboard with the uh, Republic of Gamers Strix B450F Gaming uh, for the AMD chip set. For the processor, it's a Ryzen 7, that's the 2700X. Uh, memory uh, and storage, both T-Force. So one tetrabyte of SSD there and then 16 gigs of DDR4. Uh, with RGB, it's only a couple bucks extra, so might as well get a little more splash. Uh, for a power supply, didn't go crazy here, uh, but got a bronze edition, so it has uh, a little bit of uh, a saving on uh, energy. Uh, for the case, Meshify uh, C, I really like the white one. Um, it's not the best looking case, but it had really good airflow, and I thought the white looked a bit better with the black mesh on the front than the all black one. And then lastly, uh, the big item here, uh, I figured it's time to future-proof myself, so I went with the RTX 2070 Super. Um, I'm a big Asus fan. Uh, my last desktop was an Asus. I really think they make uh, solid products, so uh, going with them for the motherboard and uh, the graphics card was a bit of a no-brainer, uh, but I can't wait to put this thing together. I think it's got some great cores, and then the other things, not as necessary, uh, but a little extra. I want to make sure this thing stays cool. So I got the Flow Ring 360, which gives me an extra three fans. There's already two in the Meshify case. So we'll be able to keep one in the back, move one to the top, and put the three here in the front for the color. Um, and plus uh, a couple other peripherals here. A few I've had. I've been using my older computer. I've got the Razer Tartarus V2 um, there for uh, my uh, gaming. A little bit um, better than me for a keyboard to keep everything uh, centralized there and have a nice easy rest for my hand. And then uh, the mouse, I love this uh, Logitech G602. It doesn't work with their newer software, um, but I'm really comfortable with this. I like the six buttons on the left. You got two on the top along with the standard left and right, and then the one in the middle. Uh, and it's really comfortable on my hand. And then I just picked up the Logitech G910 uh, wired, um, just so I had a full-size keyboard too. I'm going to be using this uh, for gaming and occasionally for uh, work and just uh, you know things at home. Uh, that I need to use the computer for. So I needed a full-size keyboard as well and thought I'd go ahead with the Logitech. Um, I like the Razer stuff a lot, but uh, price-wise, I feel like the Logitech is pretty much as good. It's got the same kind of RGB capabilities and quality, uh, but the prices are a bit better. So there's the build, uh, my first one that I'll be getting started on. All right, so here is the Fractal Mesh 5C. haven't seen this case, it's uh, generally under $100. Um, like I said, it's got really good airflow and really easy to clean. Um, you can see there's a filter at the bottom. This is all mesh uh, and airflow in the front. There's also some on the top that actually comes off with a magnet, so you can go ahead and clean it. And it's not as flashy as some other cases, but this one has clear glass. There is one that's more tempered and darker. I didn't want that because I wanted the lights to show through a little more. And I also really do like that they have a shroud on the bottom for the power supply. And then uh, in the back, there's some uh, easy ways to run the power cables from the other things down into here uh, that you can then hide pretty easily uh, for a nice show. Okay, so here's the Republic of Gaming Strix B450F. Start to build here with this. So you got the board itself. Republic of Gamers loves to give stickers, so there's all kinds of stickers you can put on things. And then all the, the cables you're going to need. And actually, nice. They give you some twist ties here to keep your cables neater. And they're black, which will go well with the cables. There's not a lot of lighting going on in here, uh, but you do have a little bit of RGB uh, up at the top. Other than that, it's a, it's a nice looking board, but it's fairly simple, nothing too complicated. Time for the processor, the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X. So this actually does have a heatsink fan that comes with it, um, so her is actually pretty good. The rate, um, I'm not going to use that because I have the cooling system. So that's what all this box space is for here. That to the side. And there's 
the actual chip. All the risins pretty much look the same. So you really just have to look at what's written on, on there. Uh, and then go ahead and get ready to put this on. Okay, we'll go ahead and put the uh, processor on here. So there's a triangle on the corner down here, and then usually there's a triangle somewhere else. You can see here it's actually engraved. It's not different color, you can see it. So I'm just gonna lift the board, make sure the triangles are lined up carefully. That's how that went in, nice and easy, and then done. All right, so now it's time for the memory. I got two uh, eight gigs here. Always good to get them in a matching pair. You can see on these, uh, one side is longer than the other, and we're gonna put them in these slots here, so you just wanna make sure they're lined up. Pretty easy to see. Also, uh, check your motherboard, but if you're going to put one, two, or four in, if you're putting four, you can fill them all, but if you're gonna use less than that, it'll recommend which one you do it. So in this case, it wants you to use the second one away from the processor and the furthest away, which is pretty much standard. So you can open it here. Those are the two I'm going to use. And you slide that in. Should hear it go in pretty easily. There you go. And you can hear that click as the arm closes on its own. That's all you need to do. There it goes. And there, of course, is where you'll have your RGB. All right, so I'm going to be putting a cooler instead of the right fan. If I was keeping the fan, then these brackets need to be here. Uh, but to get the fan on, we actually want to remove this back plate here. You can see it's on the bottom. That's got to come off. And we got to get rid of those top brackets. I'm not going to put the cooler on quite yet, but it'll be a lot easier to do this now than after I've got more pieces. So I'm just going to remove these right now. Also, good idea to have something around to hold all your extra parts. So little Tupperwares. Uh, I have kids in my house, so I've always got small little plastic bowls that are easy to use. That way you don't lose your pieces as you're doing any of this work. And then of course, I'll probably save those brackets just in case in the future. I don't like the cooler, it doesn't work anymore, whatever. It'll be easier for me to put the race fan back on. You can see that back plate comes off very easily. Uh, it's still on the ground here. It's just four pegs uh, that are going to be sitting in there. Okay. All right, so I'm going to get the power supply now and put that into the case uh, so the wires are ready to go. This is the Seasonic. Again, I said I have the bronze. A little bit more energy efficient. You can go gold, silver. It's going to cost you a bit more. I don't think the uh, energy savings is that much better. Uh, and this is one of the items where I didn't spend a ton of money. Power supply is a power supply. It really just comes down to the energy efficiency and whether or not it can uh, give you enough power for what you need. So this is 520 watts. My build should be about 450, so it gives me a little bit of extra room. And one of the things I did like about this one in particular is it's what's called a modular power supply. So what that means is not all the cables are going to be on there, right? So here's the cables loose. If it's not a modular supply, all of these cables are gonna be already into the power supply. And if you don't need any of them, you just have to tuck them somewhere. In this case, I can actually just not put in the cables that I don't need. Uh, and some are partially uh, modular and some are completely modular. This one is completely. So you can see there is uh, nothing on there unless I plug it in. And what I'm gonna have to do is take the back of the new Meshify case off over here. After I have the wires in place, then I can just go ahead and slide it in and be ready for installing the other parts. So for the modular supply, I'm gonna need a couple of cables onto here. Um, we're gonna take Need uh, this one here is going to go to the motherboard for power. You're also going to need a supplemental for the motherboard. Uh, and we're going to need a couple for the graphics card. So we're going to put those ones on there. Uh, we're going to need some SATA power for some different things. Um, and, you know, one thing uh, I should point out. So when I was going to purchase the T-Force, I was going to get a Vulcan drive. And when I went to buy it, I saw the Delta was an RGB. So I said, uh, well, it was only $5 difference. So why don't we go ahead and get the RGB? Um, it didn't show up as a, a bad compatibility when I did a PC part checker. 
Uh, problem though is uh, this little USB here uh, that needs to plug into the drive and then one of these two connectors needs to go into the motherboard. Neither of them are supported because there's not a five volt addressable header on this motherboard. Uh, so there is no way for the RGB to work. I'm going to keep the drive, uh, but it's not going to light up. Um, I didn't necessarily need that. Uh, I thought, why not? If it's a couple dollars difference, a little more lighting in there. But um, just FYI, it doesn't technically uh, isn't technically compatible with this if you want the RGB. So now I have all the uh, cords that I need in the Seasonic power drive. Uh, these two here are actually one cord. These are for the 24 pin uh, main supply for the motherboard. Uh, I also need the eight pin, which is a four and four uh, for supplemental power to the motherboard. I actually went ahead and put those right next to it just for ease of, of when I'm reaching into the case later. And then I put my two cords here to the power supply that are gonna be needed to go to the graphics card. And lastly up top, this SATA cable actually has four connectors on it. Uh, that should be plenty for what I've got planned here. I obviously have room for more, but I'm gonna just leave the one for now and I can expand later as needed. These are all now uncabled, unwired, ready to go into the back. What I'm actually do is have to take the back bracket off of the hard drive here, attach that on to the back of the power supply using the screws they provided, and then slide it back in. So now it's time to actually put the power supply in here. Uh, one thing to remember uh, when we're getting going here, uh, there is a fan. You want the fan facing down. That's where it's going to pull air in from the bottom of the case. Otherwise, it's going to get caught here on the shroud, and you're not going to get any airflow. So you can see this is now installed. I took off the side here just to make life a little bit easier. Here is the power supply. These are the cords that were coming out of the power supply. So I've, I pulled those aside, but you can also see, you know, you've got your buttons on the outside of the case. Um, there are cables here already running in place. And you can see this is uh, the nice little system that Fractal has put in place and they're actually running down into the bottom of the case here. So you have some more wires to work with. And then uh, you've actually got a couple of accessories in here that I hadn't yet taken out of the case. Um, but you can see where you've got some extra space here. A little bit hard to see in the light, but you can see that you could fit uh, some hard drives down in here, some other pieces that you want hidden underneath. One of the things I like about this power supply, the cables are gonna be mostly hidden anyways, but if they weren't, you can see here they're all black and they're all taped together nicely. Some have the red, yellow, and different colors in there. They're kind of sloppy. Uh, this is really nice and slick, so if you're gonna have something colored and you, you like the cables, you want them to show, or um, you don't have a choice and they have to show. It just makes it a little more slick. Uh, you don't have all the different colors in there. We're now just about ready to get the motherboard into the system. So time to remove the side of the case. So this is a pretty solid, heavy piece of glass. Uh, I've left the plastic on, keep it safe uh, during the build. You can see here, but now we can get access to the inside. Uh, and you can see there are already the two installed fans. There's one there in the front and one there in the back. Of course, your your ties to go to it. You can see we looked in the back before. There's where the wires are coming from because the controls for the USB, the headphones, uh, the power button are on the top of the box there. Time for the motherboard. Okay, now it's time to put the motherboard in the case. Uh, so the ATX here, there are nine uh, spacers and screws needed. You've got the little silver circles around here. You can see on the top, one, two, three. Uh, then you've got another three in the middle, one, two, and three. And at the bottom, one, two, and three. And then you'll find the uh, holes along here. There's both mini ATX and full-size ATX. So some cases will have it marked. This one doesn't, but it lines up pretty easily. Um, it's funny, there's only eight spacers and screws uh, in the, uh, or eight spacers in the bag, because one is actually pre-installed here already. Um, so when you go to put the motherboard into this particular case, it's pretty easy to snap that one on. So you'll put the spacers in the back, slide the motherboard on top of there, and then put the screws in to finish it up. 
So almost forgot. Um, I've got my spacers into the back, but uh, we took the plate off earlier. Right, you see these these four holes around there. Um, we took the plate off where the Wraith fan would have installed. Well, that's your your plate right there. It needs to get back on uh, so that I can get the flow ring installed. So what I'm going to do is just line this back up over, and then once that's on there, you have depending on what you have, uh, what what type of cooler you have. Uh, and what chipset, um, because this is the AM4, these circular bolts on the top are going to go over the fan. But so I've got to screw these ones down into the uh, through the board into the base so that we have something to install the uh, cooling on. So now the plate's back in place. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, take these here. You can see there are um, a screw on the top. And on the bottom here, there's a screw inside. Uh, that's going to screw in, but then it's got this other cap here to hold this in place once it's in. So we'll get those on firm, but not too tight. And again, lots of sensitive stuff on here. Don't want to push everything too, too tight. Do this by hand and get it plenty tight. Okay, and then there are other nuts for after right here. Um, once I'm actually putting the cooler on, these will help hold it into place. But now uh, the motherboard can go back into the box before we want to do that. Now the spacers are in and it's time to actually put the motherboard on. Um, some motherboards actually have an I.O. shield, uh, which is where all your labels are going to be. So you can see here, um, this is where all the labels are for your USBs, your uh, in your outputs of audio, your Ethernet port. Um, this one is actually already attached, but if it is not attached on your motherboard, you want to go ahead and do that before you do this install because it'll be very difficult afterwards. I'll line this up. There's no cords in the way. Now that one spacer right here in this board is the one that actually didn't uh, was already in place and did not have a screw. So that's actually nice because I can do this vertically and uh, not have to worry about it falling. It's holding it in place for me. I'm going to do these tight, not too tight. You don't want to pinch anything. What I'm doing here is the corners first, just make sure it's nice and secure and level, and then I'll do the top middle and bottom middle. Some of these are a little harder than others to get at. left and we'll be secure there we go so at this point a pretty good start um, I've got my power supply in there the cables ready to go motherboard is now installed along with the CPU and our memory um, now the other thing that I do have that I want to get into here is I'm actually going to do a cooling. Let's make sure it stays nice and cool. Uh, remember the Flow Ring 360 Thermalike. That's a picture of it right there. But you can see this is going to be a three fan radiator. And then with the wire that's going to run to the uh, processor over here. So in this case, that's possible, but it needs to go into the front over here. So what we have is one rear fan here. And it comes with the one in the front. This is where I'm going to want the radiator to go, so I'm going to have to make some modifications to this. So I'm going to have to take that fan off and put it into the top, so we'll get some more airflow right here. So I'll have one, two, 
and three more fans. Uh, plus, obviously, there's a fan underneath here that's going in from the power supply. So there's going to be lots of airflow inside of this. But right now, I'm going to need to get that out of the way. And I want to install the radiator now because I've got a very large graphics card going in here. Once that's in there on the hard drive, it's going to become a little bit more difficult uh, to get my hands in there. So I'm going to do the radiator uh, first and then attach it to the processor. Now, uh, for me to get that fan off of there and move it up to the top, uh, I actually want to get this front portion off. So uh, I have to go over here. And remember, there were multiple filters in this. Got that one on the bottom. Can pull that one off. Comes out fairly easy. And then you can actually come and pop off uh, this front portion from there. That's also the way if you want to be able to get to the front filter, you've got to take that off. So to pop this front portion off, uh, there's actually some of these little clips. Loosen them from the inside. You can see, do it on both sides. And then uh, there's some over here. They're right inside and you can take it right off. Just uh, be aware, be careful with this case. Um, there are wires here, right, that are connected. So when you pull this off, uh, you're just gonna be careful with those. So now with the front panel off, uh, you can actually get to the fan screws. Can't get to them otherwise. So you can see there is uh, one, two, three, and four. So I will take those off there so that I can uh, place the fan into another spot within the case. So you will see there is a cable here um, that's still attached through the side. So we're gonna have to uh, reroute that up from the other side. So you can see over here, uh, obviously because the motherboard doesn't come with this, um, this is the plug to that fan. So it's just routing through this hole. So you can pop it out so that it's through at the other side. And then we will take it from back over here. Now the fan is free and clear. And we can move it to a, another location. So with all the great airflow in this case, um, they've done a good job of building in protection. So again, you've got a mesh screen on top. It's magnetic, it's got nice magnets uh, all the way around it. Uh, it comes right off. And you can see here, there are uh, those lines there are where you can actually install fans. You can see there's a couple different ways. You could possibly put two up there if you wanted to. I'm not, uh, one in the back, one in the top, and three in the front is plenty for me. But if you just bring this up here, you can see where you'd be able to line up these holes and screw it in. So I guess just because I like to make things hard for myself, uh, there's one more thing here. So here is uh, my cooler. You'll see. If I put it on top of the shroud, that's not going to fit. So I'm actually going to have to remove the shroud cover and the hard drive case uh, that's underneath there to make this fit. And in that case, it will just fit. Now this is a 360 by 120. A millimeter. I checked the specs of the Mesh 5C. It does technically fit in there. Um, what they don't tell you when you look is you do actually have to remove some more parts. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so now with the bottom off. I slide this right through where the shroud cover was. And you can see now we can fit in here. I did make sure that I had my uh, Cables for my fans installed on this side so that I could keep them nice and neat. If they were over here, I would have had to wrap them through. So it's something you might want to watch out for. And now I just need to put some more screws on the other side. So those screws are in um, and everything's nice and secure and ready to go. So I can pop this uh, front cover back on after I put the uh, other screen down into the bottom and work on the inside. Okay, so um, I've actually untied all of these cables uh, because there is a controller here uh, that they need to be plugged into. Um, and then out the side here, there is a power supply for a Molex connector, which is something I actually hadn't put on my modular supply. So I've done that now. I'm gonna tuck these cables away nice and neat, and then I'll be able to plug that in on the other side. And sooner, sooner or later, very soon, we'll be actually putting this onto the motherboard. So before I um, put the cooler onto the uh, processor and um, put the motherboard in here, I'm sorry, the graphics card in here, which is going to take up a lot more space, what I want to do is plug in some of these more difficult uh, cables. So I've got a couple of fan ones here. You can see there's different spots. It'll say fan or pump, but there's a couple up here. Uh, there's a couple over here. 
There's a couple down on the bottom. I don't need one for my uh, fans over here because they're a more intricate system, so they have a different power source. So I'm gonna run this one over to that side and I'm gonna run this one uh, over to here and just make sure they're tied off nice and neat. Um, all the front panel connectors, there are a ton of them. Um, HD sound for the headphones, uh, LED, power switch. Most of them go into here. There should be a, a chart uh, inside of your uh, motherboard book. Um, you can look at that. But in this case here, you can see we've got these little rubber uh, inputs that I can put things through in different places. So I'm going to actually run those cables in uh, right from there so they can plug in. Okay, so the other thing to note is um, usually these are labeled as fan and pump. Um, doesn't really matter. You can see on mine there, fans on the top, uh, pump at the bottom, it's labeled. Same thing up here, top and bottom. Either one would work, but in your BIOS, um, that's what's going to show up. So uh, you may just want to uh, match them up to the right one whenever possible, just to make it easier for you when you're working with the BIOS later. You can see it's kind of tight in here. That's why I want to get this done now and not wait until I have my large uh, graphics card in the way and then the cables uh, from the cooler for my processor. So I have a whole mess of cables back here now, but all the ones that were coming from the front are running through here. So I'm just going to put them through the rubber here so that I can plug them into the board. Okay, so I did quite a few of the connectors here. Um, you can see here the reset uh, LEDs, the power on and off. Up here is for the USB 3. Those are all coming from the front, but there's also the HD sound. That one actually had to come way over to here. Um, so instead of coming through the rubber, there's actually these little um, cutouts in the metal. I ran it right up there just so the less wire the better. And I've just kind of pushed everything back here. So the other side's still a little bit of a mess, but that's going to be hidden and I can wrap that stuff up. Now I can move on to a couple others. Okay, so you can see it's still pretty messy over here, but I'm going to take the main uh, power supply for the motherboard now. And I'm going to run it through right through this top section because that's going to get me right over here. You can see where it gets plugged in. Actually, I don't like the way that twists, so um, this is the nice thing with these different ports here. Even though the plug is further up top, I'm going to run it through the bottom one. And then that way I can curl it up to here and pop it in. Okay, so I got a bunch of this plugged in now. Um, I've got one of the fans here uh, or the other one up over here. I have the third fan here uh, from my uh, cooler. I've got the front panel um, LEDs and reset switch here. The HD audio is plugged in on the bottom left over there. And then this one here I ran up through is a USB uh, 2.0 that comes from the controller for the Thermal Lake uh, coolers. This thick one here is the main power cord for the CPU. All right, uh, now it's time uh, for the SSD. So um, you remember I got this one, it is RGB, um, but because I don't have the uh, five volt uh, eight addressable header, um, I'm not actually gonna use RGB. Uh, if you did have RGB though, actually looks like a pretty nice looking uh, SSD. So because I took the chassis out of here, I can't put the 2.5 down there. So actually on the back side of this drive, uh, this little piece here, you can screw the hard drive right into there. And since uh, obviously I don't care about the RGB, since I don't have the plug for it, uh, that'll be just fine. Okay, so um, I took the plate off of the back here and then there's just four screws uh, you can run through. Came with the um, case. And then uh, this is sliding in the back, and you can just put it right back on here. And then there's just a single thumb screw. Just put it back into place. Pretty easy. Again, though, uh, no real need for the RGB here, because even if I was plugging the RGB, you're not going to see anything, because this is the solid side of the case. So. Okay, so now time to uh, connect my storage up. So I need my uh, SATA from the motherboard for power. So that's going to go over on this side here. Just take this over a little bit. There's my power for it. Um, I've also got these little metal poles here. Um, once these are all done, I'll be able to put some twist ties on there um, to go ahead and um, uh, cable manage, you know, keep everything in line a little bit better. And then um, I'm also going to have to run one of these over to 
the um, motherboard. So now time to put the uh, cooler on. I just slid it over. You can see the um, screws that were in there before. And then the uh, connectors. I'm gonna hold this down in place. Four of them. Well, one is a little hidden behind the cables right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those on into place. There's one, two, three. And then number four is just hidden behind these cables here. Okay, here comes the best part of the build. So I still have some cable management to do, but I have a couple more plugs for the GPU. So uh, I wanna just get this installed first. So you can see, uh, as I said before, Asus Dual GeForce RTX um, 2070 Super. It's also the overclock edition with eight gigs. So, Little double boxing in here for it. And, uh, well, that seems awfully complicated that it has unpacking steps. Let's just make sure I'm getting everything open up properly here. awfully complicated. All right, I'm going to cut this off and get this out of the box and ready to go. Okay, so uh, file this under trial and error or live and learn or whatever you'd like, um, but I actually had to flip um, my cooler back uh, the other way. Um, I had originally decided to put these tubes running uh, to what goes over the processor um, at the bottom, thinking it would just look a little bit cleaner. The problem is um, by running the tubes from here up to here, I was blocking the access to what uh, I need for a very large graphics card. So uh, once I tried to decide which slot I wanted to put it in, I quickly realized I needed a change. So uh, that is, that's that. Um, but here is the card. Uh, here is the, the PCI connector. And then um, you can see the power here. And then over on the side, uh, here is the um, video outputs. There is a HDMI and there is three... Um, uh, the uh, newer um, uh, there's one HDMI port here uh, and three display ports um, I actually got a monitor that's 144 hertz uh, one uh, millisecond uh, it's uh, actually a um, uh, made for um, other graphics cards uh, but it does have uh, the G-Sync capability for this NVIDIA um, G-Sync, so just keep in mind, um, if you do want to use the G-Sync capability, you have to look and make sure uh, that the monitor is compatible. Um, and if it is, though, you'll have to use a display port. The HTML will give you the fine quality, but it won't work with the G-Sync, so you have to use the display port. So uh, just keep that in mind um, when you're choosing what you want to do here. So with the PCI here, um, the, the ports here, I just need to decide where I want this to go doesn't really fit at the very bottom. I think this middle one's probably good. I like this little game on um, ROG here. If I put it up higher, it's going to block it. So I think I'm going to put it right here, um, which the reason I'm checking here is that also means that I need to remove uh, this metal plate here. Um, you may be able to do that after, but uh, probably going to be a little bit more difficult. So let's give this another shot here. Heard a little click there, so I believe that is all the way in. I can put these thumb screws back. So now I've brought through uh, the power connectors here. Go ahead and put the supplemental power in. One there, I'm not using the extra two pin. And 
right side. Here's the two things. Power the car. Okay, so a uh, moment of truth. I've got all the cables in. I've put the sides back on. I'm going to go ahead and put the power into the back, plug it in, put one of my monitors in, and see if we can get it going. Okay, so uh, here we are uh, about two months later. Um, we now are in the midst of coronavirus and I've been working from home for two months. So um, my desk area has become a little different than I initially planned. Um, but, uh, you know, I had to put up a whiteboard behind so I can work regularly. Uh, I've had to add some extra uh, ports here. So my work laptop, I can flip back and forth in these monitors. But the build is done. Uh, I've been super happy with it. Um, I've added a couple of other pieces. I got a, a Logitech webcam there that I use for when I'm streaming. Uh, got a speaker system. Comes a little subwoofer. That one's also Logitech. That sounds fantastic. Uh, controller for when I play controller-based games. You can see my peripherals are all set up. There's the G910. Uh, you got the, the Razer Tartarus. Uh, there it goes. Um, you've got the uh, my mouse. i got a remote there for some lights. And I have two uh, dual Acer monitors uh, that I really liked. I, I had one. I had another smaller monitor. Uh, once I decided I had to work from home, I went ahead and, and got a second one. Um, so now I have the two of those working side by side, both 27 inch running 144 megahertz, uh, less than a millisecond. And then most recently, um, I actually went and I added one more fan. I think I made a note of it in the video, but I went out and got another ring fan uh, in the back. And so what I ended up doing was moving the fan during the build that was in the back. I actually moved to the top. So now I've got three fans intaking in the front along with the water cooling, the thermal take. And then I've got the two fractal fans in the top pulling air down. Uh, a fan on the bottom pulling air up for the power supply and then uh, I made this uh, the the um, outtake fan uh, just because you, know, you can't see the colors a lot on this this is maybe one downside of the case the colors don't show through the mesh great uh, when I'm playing and sitting you can see them but I, I just wanted a little more uh, color effect there so I went ahead and added that one more fan and the cooling was actually fine without it it was really an aesthetic issue uh, but you can see you know, you've got two fans up top here now uh, everything is running fantastic. Um, I am going to make one more change to this rig. Um, my son has a computer that uh, only has 8 gigs of memory. I think they run at 2400. So I'm actually going to give him these two sticks um, of T-Force. Um, I've been playing some games like Valorant that have um, some security issues right, for people hacking. So they've actually taken away my ability to make my T-Force um, RGB sync with my thermal take. Um, so I'm going to go and get some thermal take uh, tough RAM. Uh, same uh, 16 gigs, two sticks, but I'm actually going to get a little faster. I'm going to get 4400 uh, probably more than I need, but the price difference is like $15, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. But I am super happy uh, with this system. Uh, it's running really, really well. Um, I'm getting uh, 144 frames most of the time. Uh, even a more demanding game like a Fortnite, towards the end game, you start dropping closer to 100. You can see the, the TTRGB here. Um, but you can see I'm running a lot of different games in here. Um, I play sports games. Uh, I play Valorant. I'm playing Fortnite. Um, Star Wars games. Uh, it's all fantastic. I'm able to stream uh, simultaneously. Uh, and I couldn't be happier. I'm getting great performance. It was a ton of fun building this as a first computer. Uh, I am really happy with every part. Um, the Fantex uh, power supply that you can't see here. And the Mushkin hard drive in the back. Have both been fantastic. The, the graphics card, the processor, everything has run uh, as good as I could expect. And the thermal take's been amazing. My CPU stays super cool. I mean, my whole rig stays cool with all these fans. Um, so great case, great pieces inside. Um, I, I don't think, honestly, I would trade out uh, anything other than that T-Force um, memory um, I'm trading. But that's a really not because of performance. That's just because of the way it looks. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hopefully it helps. You should know this is the first time I've done it. I've been around computers for many, many years. I was using DOS uh, back when and, and printers that had like three little pens to draw with. Um, but I've never uh, built an entire computer, only pieces here and there. So a little nerve wracking, but it turned on fine. It worked great. I didn't show you uh, setting up the software. 
uh, and putting everything in. That's just a much longer video that uh, there's plenty of out there. So, um, but I hope this is a good example of somebody with some computer knowledge who is, uh, you know, understanding how things work. Uh, watched some videos, uh, checked out some some blogs and some uh, good sites, and uh, went ahead and tried it, and uh, it was fantastic. I probably paid half of what I would have paid had I bought this rig already built for me. So, uh, happy gaming.